Do I have some tea for you? Just wait until the Ryan Reynolds headline hits. That will be a glorious day. We're going to touch on that. I got a lot of stuff to touch on. I have, I have a lot of tea to pour. So when the Snyder Cut was officially confirmed back in May, I made a companion video about the things that I wanted to see added to his true vision. Because I told you from day one that he'd be adding new material, despite others insisting it would never happen. Just like they said the Snyder Cut would never happen. The Snyder Cut is something very new in Hollywood. It's very exciting. Uh, I think it's paved way for the whole multiverse thing that's going on. You know, this, this fan fulfillment, which is turning out to be a very lucrative business, business model. But Snyder, of course, he is the catalyst. It's a pretty exciting place to be. But as he said in his interview with me, this is supposed to be his ideal Justice League saga. So if he can think it, he'll do it. And I'm so glad that Warner Brothers and AT&T, and AT&T might be the magic sauce here that made this happen, as many of you uh, insist, but Warner Brothers had to go along with it, but that they realized that's the whole point of this exercise, doing Zack's vision. And I told you Green Lantern is coming. And again, I'm hearing a Ryan Reynolds headline is likely very soon. But I also told you I'd like to see Jared Leto's Joker, which would make sense, not just from a fan perspective, but, perspective, but from a business perspective as well. And what do you know? Today, here he is. Also, with a name check for Amber Heard, who I also just told you isn't going anywhere. If you didn't see my tweet, I told you that I'd heard that Amber Heard will return for Aquaman 2. Uh, I thought she was very good as Mira, so I would like to see her come back. Uh, although she is problematic from a PR perspective, as was evidenced by some of the reactions to my tweet saying she wasn't going anywhere. But as I explained, Warner Brothers is aware of this and they're building in a safety net. There will be a second female character uh, that should be announced, I think, maybe by the end of the year, uh, but coming soon. I'm not, I don't know who the second female character is. It's probably Dolphin. But there will be a second female character in Aquaman 2 uh, who will be there to take some of the pressure off of Amber Heard. Well, I'm sure Amber Heard loves being the only female uh, character, but this will mean they don't have, the Warner Brothers in DC don't have to rely on her so heavily. And also they're filming it in a way that if things get really bad with the fan reaction, um, they can dial back Amber Heard's presence in the movie. And the film, it's the same thing they're doing with Johnny Depp and Fantastic Beast 3. They're giving themselves options and posts should they need them. I know some of you on that note were like, how can you cut Grindelwald out of his own movie? He was hardly in Fantastic Beasts 2. So I don't know, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious how you could do it. All right, so anyway, uh, Snyder has four glorious hours to fill which means, of course, additional story. And with four hour-long episodes, he'll need cameos like this to make every single week exciting. This week, Green Lantern shows up. This week, you know, Jared Leto's Joker. That's gonna get people talking and sharing screen grabs and looking forward to every single week and not being able to wait until it's available to watch as one single movie. So this is not only exciting creatively, but it's imperative that it be done from a business angle, which is maybe why Warner Brothers and AT&T agreed to it. Also, I've been telling you, this is one big audition for the Snyderverse. Now there are rumors like every week that, oh, Henry Cavill has signed a deal. Ben Affleck has signed a new deal for standalone projects, new standalone projects. But so far, Warner Brothers, as I'm telling you, is hedging their bets and is only guaranteeing cameos for those actors, Henry Cavill and Black Adam. Henry Cavill specifically said, even after these rumors came out recently, that he's not re-signed to Superman. But I, I told you that, and it was reported by the trades, that he's gonna show up in cameos. You might see him in Black Adam, Shazam, if this all works out. Don't worry, I have more Henry Cavill tea for you in just a moment. But of course, Ben Affleck is showing up in the Flash movie, which we'll discuss also in a moment in more detail. But let me give you that uh, Henry Cavill tea. So I've also heard that J.J. Abrams is poised to take over Superman. That's the whole reason Warner Brothers made a deal with him. They were like, and you'll do Superman, right? And I think with his Spielbergian, as the Spielbergian aspects to him, and you know what? I think for all of our problems with J.J. Abrams, you have to agree that from a business perspective, he does deliver. The first Star Trek, well, you know, I told you how I felt about it. I think he does a great beginning, but he doesn't lay a strong enough foundation to build on. And you saw that with Star Trek and you saw it with Star Wars. But they made a lot of money, so he's gonna try again with Superman. So I heard that J.J. Abrams has met with Henry Cavill, but he's waiting to see how the Snyder Cut does before he decides if he wants to continue with Cavill or recast a Superman of his own. So yet another reason for you to make sure you watch this thing and talk about it. 
Uh, and I would be like, please, Henry Cavill, be nice to everyone. Get a work, get a work, get a, you know, work out with everybody. Make sure you get along. I heard Henry Cavill comes from, I was talking to someone who has a very good experience with Henry Cavill and said he has a military background. And so part of me is like, maybe his militariness, you know, from his family makes it so that he's like, you know, he doesn't understand the duplicity of Hollywood. He's like, everyone should just say what they mean and do what they want and do what they say. Um, but that's not how Hollywood works. And so uh, hopefully Danny Garcia can teach him the ways of, of Hollywood and, you know, business negotiation. Uh, so that's what's going on with Cavill. As for Batfleck in an HBO Max show, neither Warner Brothers or Ben Affleck himself are ready to make that commitment till they get an idea of how big the Batfleck audience really is. I mean, they made a big deal about the Snyder Cut and they were disappointed with the initial signups. I'm not surprised about that because it's so far away. But, you know, they're like, I think it makes sense. They're like, we know people are excited about Ben Affleck as Batman. He looks fantastic these days, by the way. He looks in total Batman shape, more so than he ever was even before. But, you know, you want to make sure that the people are going to show up for this. So these are good tests. The Snyder Cut and the upcoming Flash film. If those do well, then I believe and I've heard that you will get your Ben Affleck HBO Max show. But they're not going to do anything before that. All right, as for Jared Leto, I'm very happy for Jared Leto. I'm happy for all these people. They're all swell people who've done great work and didn't deserve what happened to them. So as for Leto, of course, there's the Ayer cut, right? Which David Ayer has been pushing relentlessly once he found out that it was a viable option to have Warner Brothers release these cuts, uh, which I think is, you know, I have mixed feelings on that, as I've also made clear. And it's crucial, as I also have made very clear, that Snyder go first. He's the catalyst. He's leading this charge. It's called the Snyderverse, and the air cut exists in the Snyderverse. Uh, Zack Snyder being executive producer on that film. So I know that some of you argue that the Suicide Squad was supposed to be a prequel to Justice League, so it should come out first. But those elements, and David Ayer admitted this, were never filmed. They never made it past the script stage. So even if he were to do his original cut, it still wouldn't be a Justice League prequel. So it can come afterwards. And I think we'd all like to see it, specifically for Leto's performance, which was obviously massacred in post. I mean, it's clear, not just because they are missing shots that we all wanna see, the tuxedo with the grenade, where is that? But also you can just tell that the performance is missing giant chunks. I've also commented on how Ayer didn't do a great job supporting Leto creatively. They just weren't a match. It's not a knock on either of them. I mean, maybe it is a little, but it's not, you know, let's, you know, officially it's not a knock on either of them. And I think that, you know, Leto just didn't get the support that he needed. And as a result, in some of his scenes, he seemed a little bit lost. So Snyder is a much more meticulous director. He plans things out very carefully instead of David Ayer, who's like a, let's see what happens type of guy. So Leto, although I do think that David Ayer deserves credit for how effectively he redesigned the Suicide Squad. You know, you might love it or hate it, but it definitely made an impression has been very, and has proven to be very popular. So anyway, I think that Leto teamed with Snyder could go a long way to vindicating Leto's Joker. And that's really what the Snyder Cut is all about, vindication. That's why it's such a compelling story. That's why it's such a compelling, you know, narrative, even, you know, behind the scenes. That's one of the major, I mean, it's become as legendary as a Hollywood story as it has a DC story, which is so cool. And that this is all about showing that the Snyderverse that Zack was building before Jeff Johns selfishly derailed him. By the way, Jeff Johns and John Berg will be taking their name off of the Snyder Cut, um, saying that, you know, it's Zack's vision. I mean, they would be crucified alive if they kept their names on it, so I'm glad they came to their senses. Although if the Green Lantern casting works out as well as I'm hearing, Jeff Johns might get a last minute reprieve. I don't feel good about it either, but I mean, he's delivering, it seems, with Green Lantern. So uh, it's a tough, it's tough. It's a tough world. So anyway, uh, I think that this is about showing that the Snyderverse is viable and valuable to Warner Brothers and AT&T. And Warner Brothers, embracing the multiverse, could definitely have the Snyder Cut and all its characters, all of its characters, live on specifically on HBO Max. Movie-wise, I do believe the DCEU will switch to Pattinson. He's already incredibly popular. He's the big movie brand. Um, I even hear there's a Joker tease in the Batman movie, uh, a different, a new Joker. So I think Flashpoint will bring, you know, I've told you, I heard that Ben Affleck's Flashpoint performance is gonna be a goodbye and he will get switched out for Pattinson. He'll be like, bye everybody, see me, I'll see you over on HBO Max. And I think we'd all be delighted with that because I think many of us like both Pattinson and Bat, uh, Pattinson and uh, Batfleck. They're both fantastic.
So the only question mark really left right now um, is Henry Cavill's Superman, if he'll stay in the movies. He could, I mean, if they do a, a Ben Affleck HBO Max show and a Snyderverse show, I wonder if Zack Snyder would continue with the Justice League story if he would maybe do a Batman show um, or produce it and then the characters could live on there because we love Batman Superman crossovers too. It'll be interesting to see, you know, what's, you know, who was interested in continuing in the HBO Max streaming space. Streaming's pretty hot right now. Streaming's pretty hot right now. Uh, so anyway, yes, the bad flick could definitely live on, but in HBO Max. But again, there's no deal yet. There's no deal yet. It's something everybody's aware of over there, but they haven't made a deal. So you better watch the Snyder Cut. That's the big takeaway from this, because Warner Brothers will be looking at those numbers, those HBO Max subscription numbers and the trending on Twitter. Like, does this trend every Sunday night or whatever night it airs? That's going to be crucial because they're gonna de decide off of this if they're gonna continue the Snyderverse story, which would include a bat, maybe could include a Batflex series where Jared Leto's Joker continu could continue as well, whether or not we get the air cut, and also whether or not Henry Cavill stays on the big screen as Superman. That's all riding on this. It's really, it's an exciting time to be alive. Uh, I think it's gonna be really interesting. And I, I suspect this stuff will do quite well, especially because Zach's being allowed to, to do his creative vision and we all know he has a great creative vision. All right, so what do you think? Share your thoughts down below, subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.